I'm Jeff Orge, the president of Gateway Seminary, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this Bible study that we'll be doing together these next few weeks. Uh, for many of us, living in America today is like living in a strange land. We feel like aliens who've awakened in a hostile environment that's toxic to our faith. We need a sure word to help us understand how to survive, but more than that, how to thrive in these new circumstances confronting us. The problems seem overwhelming. Racism, terrorism, family breakdowns, abortion and same-sex marriage, pornography, prostitution, sex trafficking, modern-day slavery, illegal immigration, and on and on and on. It seems like things are spinning out of control. It's easy to think we're facing a dire situation Christians have never before encountered, but that's not the case. In fact, our world is not that different from the world of the very first Christians. They faced many, if not all, of the same issues we're dealing with today. In some ways, they had it worse than we do because they were a much smaller, marginalized movement just getting started. And yet, they found strength to endure and the insight they needed to thrive from various resources, including letters from their leaders. We have many of those letters with us today. We call three of them 1 Peter, 2 Peter, and Jude. The first two were written by Simon Peter near the end of his life. They are legacy letters explaining how displaced and disaffected Christians can handle the pressure and persecution already present in the latter part of the first century. Jude, another early church leader, added insights along these same lines, and his short letter is a good companion to Peter's letters. These letters have become books in the New Testament and will form the scriptural foundation for this quarter's Explore the Bible curriculum. When Peter started his first letter, he addressed it to Christians as temporary residents dispersed throughout several provinces and regions. One older translation uses the words aliens and strangers to describe these Christians. Uh, those words describe how you may feel about your life today. You may feel like an alien or a stranger in your world. Familiar standards have been abandoned. Moral absolutes have been replaced by moral ambiguity. Behaviors long embraced by the larger community are now being rejected outright in the name of tolerance. These are challenging times. They are not, however, times for despair. God has given clear instructions for living in difficult circumstances. I hope you will embrace the opportunity to learn how to thrive in our modern world by completing this study and applying its insights to your life. As you begin the study, you'll discover the reason for our hope in difficult circumstances. Our hope rests on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His resurrection gives us hope for overcoming any obstacle we encounter in life, including death. Since Jesus has been resurrected, he's conquered the ultimate enemy, death, and therefore is more powerful than any lesser difficulty as well. Starting our study by reaffirming the power of the resurrection underscores the uniqueness of Christianity. The resurrection is more, though, than a theological concept. It's also a practical source of power for daily living. The resurrection makes holy living in a decidedly unholy world very possible. When you're faced with difficult choices, you can draw on the same power that brought Jesus out of the grave to sustain you. Holiness is not a legalistic goal. It's a spiritual possibility through Jesus. A significant part of this study will focus on the importance of community, relationships, and fellowship to sustain your faith through challenging times. God is at work through you to strengthen other believers and through them to strengthen you in return. We are not designed to go it alone in our faith. God made us to thrive in community. When we become Christians, we join a new community empowered by God and sustained by His grace. We grow in our faith by learning from others and learning with others what it means to follow God. Now, one aspect of this is learning how to serve together. Many people learn best by doing. God recognizes this. After all, he made people this way and designed his church to be a doing body or a fellowship. When believers honor God by doing good things for others, those unselfish acts help mature our character and increase our faith. Doing good works for others also involves telling unbelievers about our hope in Jesus. If you think you are feeling alone and frightened by world events, imagine how much more your non-Christian friends feel these same emotions. You honor God and bless others by telling them about the hope you have found in Jesus. The best news you can share is the good news of the gospel. When you tell others about Jesus, particularly about his resurrection, you are a source of hope for others. 
Now, another major part of this study will focus on building or maintaining healthy relationships during challenging times. The family, particularly marriage, is under attack today. Peter anticipated this and writes about building healthy homes. He also describes ways to strengthen relationships at work and in the community. You'll find this part of this study very practical as you learn how to preserve your most important relationships when cultural and political forces are trying to undermine them. One of the key themes throughout this study is the spiritual nature of the battle we're waging. Spiritual warfare is real. Peter is very clear Satan is a real being with real power who is using every means possible to damage God's church. While Peter mentions prayer and fellowship as sources of spiritual power, his focus is using the Word of God to confront Satan and overcome evil. The Word of God is vital in our lives. You probably agree with that or you wouldn't be involved in this Bible study. You recognize the Bible's power to change you. Peter describes the Bible as a trustworthy standard, as a source of spiritual strength, and the only absolute truth you can base your life on. You can trust the Bible, and this study will help you deepen that trust. It will also help you learn practical ways to activate the Bible's influence in your daily life. As a Christian today, it is likely you feel pressured or perhaps harassed for your faith. Fortunately, most of you are not yet being persecuted for your faith. But some Christians in our world are being persecuted, even to the point of death, as confirmed by video evidence and even eyewitness accounts. This study will help you learn how to respond to persecution. It will make you grateful you've been spared so far and give you empathy for those who are already suffering. Since persecution is real, it may seem like things are just going to keep getting worse with no recourse or solution. But that's not true. Yes, world events are trending away from biblical morality. Yes, violent evil is more prevalent than ever. And yes, the Bible predicts horrible wars and human suffering are in our future. That would be very bad news if that were the end of the story. But it's not. The end of the story will be the return of Jesus. Our hope, while grounded on the resurrection, culminates in the second coming of Jesus. Peter concludes his letters with a stirring call to anticipate the return of Jesus as the ultimate deliverance from all heartache and affliction. Jesus is coming again. We can be sure of it for two reasons. He came the first time just as he promised, and his resurrection demonstrates supernatural power over time and space. He is coming again. It's hard to imagine a study more practical than what you will do for these next few weeks. You will study a portion of the Bible particularly applicable to daily life today. It seems, it seems it was written against the backdrop of today's current events. You'll find it timely, invigorating, and relevant to your life right now. Thank you for the time you're investing in learning God's Word. He promises His Word will impact your life, and I'm excited for the adventure you will have as you complete this study. Those of us who have worked together to produce this study have been impacted by it, and we know God will use it to transform you as well. So may God bless you richly as you study His Word and apply it in your lives.